Hi, Scrapbook friends, it's Nicole. Um, while we're all kind of having this opportunity to be at home, I hope a lot of you are getting the chance to do some scrapbooking. I know that there are many, many of you uh, watching this who have the new Creative Memories 12 inch trimmer. Um, it is amazing. It has been just by far the most popular tool that I've seen in you know, my 18 years of being with Creative Memories. But there are a lot of little details about it that I'm, I'm, I know that some people have either forgotten or I didn't get a chance to teach you about. Um, I'm often surprised when I do a, a demo in person to find out that I left something out when you bought your trimmer. So I thought this would be a good chance since we're all, you know, kind of have an opportunity to maybe watch a little bit longer video. Hopefully this won't be too long, but you know me. Um, to just talk about the Creative Memories Trimmer and what makes it so good. So the first thing is that it's just a nice solid trimmer. I mean, it's just a nice weight, a nice thickness. It just feels really sturdy when you use it. Then you can see that it is white, which is a great thing. And then it's got the lines in black. It makes it so, so easy to read the measurements when you are trying to measure the things that you're cutting. Um, the track that the blade runs on is aluminum, so it's very sturdy. It's not going to bend. It's not flexible. Um, and so it's going to keep your cuts super straight. Sometimes blades can wobble a little bit, but this one, the blade stays really, really straight on track. If you look at the size of the trimmer, the way that the blade is situated, you have a nice section over here that allows for you to cut up to one and three quarter inches on this side. And I always like to cut with as much as possible on the wider side because that way you can line up with this raised edge to make sure that your cut is going to be flush. So if you're just cutting less than one and three quarter inches, do it on this side. Put the bulk of your paper here, measure your one or one and a half inches, whatever on this side and cut, take that little strip off. And that just helps with the stability to keep that, uh, to keep your paper straight. Um, the blade is a rotary blade and it's replaceable and interchangeable. And to just replace it, you open up the little case and then you pull out the blade and you can see the blade is in a protective housing and there's no blade poking out. So your fingers are safe. You're not gonna be cut, it's a safety blade. There's this little white uh, button on the top that when this is pressed down by the piece in here, I'll show you in a minute, um, that's what allows the blade to come out. Let's see if I can do it with my finger now. So you see that? No, you can't see it because my hand's in the way. But um, anyway, there's the, there's the little blade popping out. But you don't, that doesn't cut you when you're changing blades. It only comes into play when you put it in here and there's this little button in the case that pushes down. So when you replace your blade or you take your blade out, you want to always remember to put the curved side down and it's going to slip, slip right in this blade housing and then you just snap that shut. Now this does not lock into place anywhere. People have asked me that. Um, it, it, it doesn't lock in. It, it will, you know, slide down if, you, you know. Um, but that's okay. I mean, I've not, that has not been a problem for me. Um, I don't, wave it around too much so that's been fine um the so the blade itself what i have in here right now is the straight blade and then the blade works with the little cutting mat and this is a great feature if you've had a paper trimmer before you have probably experienced making a cut and having the edges be fuzzy and just being frustrated i know many times i've had to take a pair of scissors and cut off that fuzzy edge it just drives me nuts so on this trimmer, it cuts really, really smoothly. You know, they say it cuts like butter. Um, and, and, but you'll notice it after a while that it's not gonna be cutting as smoothly. You're gonna be left with a, with a jaggedy edge. So that's when you know it's time to change out your mat. So the mat, there's a little um, cutout right here for you to slip your fingernail in, and this little mat comes out. And if you see up at the top, it has a number. And when you get your trimmer, it's going to be on number one. And so when number one starts to get all kind of torn up, I don't know if you can see. Anyway, trust me, mine's torn up. Then you're going to pull this out. You're going to flip it around to number two. 
And just remember to use the Creative Memories logo to remind you which section is what you're looking at. So number one up here, when number one's used up, put number two. And then when number two is done, you flip it over and you're going to get number three and number four. So when you get to about number three or number four, that's going to be when you want to go ahead and get a replacement mat that stores underneath um, so that when this runs out of of rehealing ability you'll be able to keep on keep on cutting um, so underneath I talked about the mat storage we also have the blade storage one of the things I love about this trimmer is that we do have extra blades for it you know we have a decal the scoring wave there's a couple others that I don't have out right now um, makes it really fun to be able to cut other decorative edges so you can see where the where the blade storage goes in and I do have an extra straight blade just because I don't I definitely don't want to run out but over here on the side is where the mat would go in and it just slides under these three little brackets you do need to take it out of the plastic that it comes in to make it um, to make it snap in there but then once you've got that in there it stays in there it doesn't fall out so you can have that as your emergency backup but this apparently is my emergency backup and I haven't replaced my new one because I'm only on uh, cut number two. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in, cut number two. Another thing I love, love, love about this trimmer is um, all the measuring guides. Of course, I talked about the black lines on the white background. I talked about um, the, the aluminum track, which allows for stability, but it also has a ruler on it. So when you're cutting, you can use the measurements along this ruler to help you position your cuts. Now you notice that if you're cutting, the blade housing covers up that ruler. So a neat trick is to remember that this blade housing is two inches across. All right, and so the white line is at the one inch mark. So if you wanna use this as your measuring guide, and you want to cut to let's say five inches then you know that the white line needs to be at five inches uh, the white line is what shows you exactly where the blade is connecting with your paper so you would use this measurement guide it does require a little bit of math but you can either use the white line it's on both sides you can either use the white line with this side where it has the number five or right here i can't see number five so i would go to where i can just barely see number six and you can see that then the white line lines up with number five right there. Okay, hope that makes sense. Um, we also have the ability to cut angles. If you want to cut a 45 degree angle, it's super easy. You just line your paper. I'll show you that in a minute. And of course, we do have the fold out arm that will allow you to cut up to a 16 inch piece of paper or a photo. Um, I've had people say to me, where can you get paper that's 16 inches long? And we, you know, we know it exists, but um, like if you have an 11 by 14 photo, maybe that you're wanting to trim down, that would be handy for this. And what's really fun about the cutting arm is that it has a little foot that folds out so that when you put it down on the table, this is flush. You know, it doesn't dip down and, and you know, change the measurement. It, it stays flush. But for right now, I'm not going to use the, use the fold-out arm. I'm just going to show you a couple tricks that you can do with your trimmer. Um, one of the things I really love is these sight lines. And I've talked to, hopefully talked to everybody about the sight lines. But they are just little guides that live up here in the edges of the, of the track. And you can slide them out and they're clear. But you can't see them over the gray. So I'm going to put a piece of paper in here. And let's say this is a, a piece of plaid from the or gingham from the new spring medley tone on tone so i can position by seeing right here where my line is the the number the closest to the logo the one we have the number two right now that's going to be your cutting guide so i'm going to position my line right here but i want to make sure that i'm going to cut right on the line so i'm going to use these little cutting guides just to make sure that i'm exactly on the line whoops so you see right here, this little cutting guide is right, right on that line. So that when I cut 
And you don't have to worry about them. They'll just move out of the way when you need them to. It cuts right exactly on that cutting line and gives you that perfect, perfect edge without leaving any excess over here. So that's a fun thing with the sight lines. It works great if you're trying to cut from a pattern like this, if you're trying to, if you've drawn out a pencil line or something you want to cut around that, the sight lines work really well for that. Um, one of the things that people ask me a lot is how to measure smaller pieces. So if you look here at the trimmer, you see that the first measurement you see on here is one inch. You can kind of see the half inch right here. Um, but the first number you see is one inch. And sometimes people are like, I want to cut a quarter of an inch. So that's when these lines on your cutting mat are going to be really helpful. And I'm going to actually flip over and use the new side because um, you can get a bit better visual. I can see it for fine, fine when I'm doing it at home, but on the video, it's hard to see. So this line with the number closest to the logo is your cutting line, this first line right here. So I know that that's exactly where my... Uh, blade is going to cut. If you want to cut a quarter of an inch, it's going to be the other cutting line, the second cutting line that you, you line up against. If you want to cut a quarter of an inch, sorry, that was an eighth of an inch. Did I say a quarter? That's an eighth of an inch. A quarter of an inch is the edge of this cutting mat. So you do really have to hold it down tight if you want to cut a quarter of an inch. The... Um, because only one side of the track is holding your paper down, the paper does want to buckle a little bit. But if you just, this is just lined up with the very next line. So here's my quarter of an inch, or eighth of an inch, sorry, piece that I cut using the second cutting line. And now I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch by using the edge of the mat. So if you see right here, the you know, that was the first line I cut right there. And then I'm gonna to cut to the edge of the mat and that's a quarter of an inch. So there's my quarter of an inch. And then this very first line that's printed on here is your half inch mark. So there's your half an inch. So you can, you can cut these, um, super thin pieces just be aware that you do when it when both of the sides of the track they has a little bit of a grippy strip on here and if that isn't grabbing your paper it could wiggle a little bit so you really do have to hold your paper down since you don't have the trimmer to do it for you um and so then the other one that's you can cut that does isn't exactly measured is five and a half so if you see that the measurements on here go to five but the actual edge of the trimmer itself is five and a half. So if I was gonna cut a five and a half inch square, I would just line it up exactly with the side. And you see I'm spot on because this uh, gingham has like a half inch gingham and it cut exactly perfectly. Oh, although that side's not, Never mind. I don't know. I'm impressed that it cut magically along that, <laughs> that straight line. Um, then if you wanna do five and, a five and three quarters or bigger, then that's when you would open up this folding arm um, so of course I'm going to do, I'm going to do a square. I'm going to show you how to do a, uh, cut two triangles. Uh, if you've done that triangle fold page that, um, we've done at some retreats or anything, you've learned this, but you can use the line again here on the trimmer to line up your points. If you put your points at both ends, that will cut you a two triangles, or you can just use this 45 degree mark. Maybe you don't have a square. Maybe you have a rectangle piece of paper and you're like, oh, I want a couple little triangles. Just use this little 45 degree angle. And as long as this corner touches that piece of the trimmer, you can get your triangle. You know, if you go too far and uh, like this, obviously you're not going to get that because you've, you've gone too far past the cutting line. One of the other things that people have asked me about cutting triangles that I have found really, really cool is how do you cut your paper into two triangles? And I've done a little video about this before, but I'm going to put it in here together again. Um, as you can see that it's bigger than our trimmer. You know, we don't, well, I, don't, I don't know what the dimensions are of, a, of this angle. Somebody who knows math can do their Pythagoras theme or whatever, figure that out. Um, but one of my friends came up with the idea of that you just have to bend your paper. 
So I'm just going to match the edges of my paper right here together. And then you just go along and you just kind of pinch it. And it is going to leave a little crease. We couldn't figure out a way to do it without a crease. But then you put your creased edge down here along the little raised section and put your point of your trimmer or point of your paper right here along the trimmer cutting guide. And you could use your um, sight lines for this that if, if you want to be for sure. But there's also a little triangle right here on the edge of the uh, blade housing that will line up perfectly and show you. So I'm just going to cut right along here. And there's my two large triangles if you want to go all the way clear across you know your 12 by 12 paper and you do notice it a little bit but once you have it stuck down on your page and it has a chance to soften up or if the back is a little bit more patterned you really are not going to notice it unless you're looking for it um, and of course you want to use your paper as the background of your photos anyway so you know put a, a photo or an embellishment or something over the top of that the last thing I want to show you is one of my very favorite things about the um, about this trimmer um, and I'm sure that people knew how to do it before this trimmer, but I did not. And that is how to cut four five by seven mats out of one piece of 12 by 12 paper. Um, usually when I've had to cut five by seven mats, I've cut five by seven, five by seven, and then five by seven and had a piece left over. But with the trimmer and with the, the measurements along this aluminum blade guide, it makes it super easy. So you take your paper and you line up the edge at five. So that's going to be our five inch line. And then we're going to cut to seven. And again, this is a two inch housing. I want to cut so the white line is at seven. So I'm just going to wait, cut to tell this edge that I can see is just barely at the eight. All right. So you can see it's at the eight, just like that. And then you lift this up. Take your paper, turn it clockwise, and again, put it at the five. And if you've left your blade here, I just leave it here, and then I just go back the other direction. I'm at the eight, which means I'm at the seven, so I'm going to cut back that way. So there's my first mat. Clockwise again, I'm going to cut back down to seven, meaning eight. And there's my next mat, and then turn it one more time. And this one's easy because you don't really have to measure. And there's my other two set five by seven mats. And all you have left is this one little two by two square, which you can use for something else. It's really fun. So this same concept works with any size photo mat that you want. I know a lot of us, five by seven, if you have a four by six photo, let's see if I have a four by six photo someplace. Um, yeah, I don't have one. Um, if you have a four by six photo, this would be a half inch mat all the way around. A lot of us don't like to do that. So you could do a uh, four and a half by six and a half inch mat. And that would work really well. And so the way you're going to do that first is you're going to cut an inch off of this and start with an 11 by 11 piece of paper. So I'm going to start with here. I'm going to cut an inch off this side. Of course, I'm going to save this because that's a perfect size for a border. And then I'm going to cut an inch off this side. And actually, sometimes you can do this with some of our border maker cartridges that cut something and then they end up using about an inch and you're left with this piece that might be 11 inches. So we're going to do exactly the same thing we did last time, except we're going to put at four and a half. And we're going to cut to six and a half, which means my housing is going to touch at seven and a half. Four and a half. And a half. Four and a half. This one's easy because you can see right here when I want to get down here to six and a half. I can also use this line right here, but my my, uh, my eyes just don't work as well that way. So it's easier for me to use this little thing and just add an inch. And four and a half by six and a half. All right, and I'm positive I've got some pictures right here. I just had to clean up my table for you guys to. Um, so I could show you this. Here's here we go. Here's my here's a picture. So um, this of course is a phone picture. So it's five by or four by five point three three. So I'd probably trim this down. But anyway, that's the you know the mat size for, for a four by six photo. Okay, I think that is it. If you have any questions, um, 
you know, I love to talk about the trimmer. I recently saw somebody post something on Facebook that said, if right this minute I asked you to give a 20 minute class on something, would you be able to do it? And I said, oh, sure I could. And now I just proved to myself that um, I've just talked to you for 20 minutes about the trimmer. I love the trimmer. I could probably talk to you for 20 minutes more about some of the, the little things that, um, that I like about it. But if you've got one, you already know. And if you don't have one, when all this craziness is over, I invite you to drop by one of my events, try my trimmer out. Um, I did not know how much I needed a new trimmer. I did not know that I would love a trimmer so much. I love this trimmer. I love the, just the quality of the engineering and the quality of the product. And it's just so nice to have a trimmer that cuts straight every single time. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. I hope that um, I've answered the questions you might have. If there are any other questions about the trimmer that I left out, please put them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them, uh, probably just by text, but who knows, I may at some point have to do another video. So I hope this is helpful to you and wherever you are, wash your hands and happy scrapbooking.